Yeah, Rapunzel is still in her tower. I can't get down or out, which means I'm not really depressed or sad about it. I can't get out because life's just not happening right now, which is fine. But I really like sharing these books with you. Silver pennies. And short little stories. Can't get to it. I know I'm still. I have so many ideas, and I just feel like I don't have enough time. And I don't use time. Only because I'm afraid. This one is called, The Fairies Have Never a Penny to Spend. Here is another lo lo lovely poem about fairies. Notice what a singing rhythm it has and in what un unexpected places the rhymes come. The fairies have never a penny to spend. They haven't a thing put by. But theirs is the dower of bird and of flower. And theirs are the earth and the sky. And though you should live in a palace of gold or sleep in a dried up ditch, you could never be poor as the fairies are and never as rich. <laughs> Since ever and ever the world began, they have danced like a ribbon of flame. They have sung their song through the centuries long and yet is never the same. And though you be foolish or though you be wise with hair of silver or gold, you can never be young as the fairies are and never as old. <laughs> Rose Hillman. Beautiful. <laughs> Priceless. And also, God's sight. This one's God's best for you. Although we can't see air, we know it's around us. Air is in every breath we take, and it's essential to life. We can't see carbon monoxide either, yet a high concentration of the invisible gas causes death. Neither can we see gravity, yet its force affects everything we do. Just because our eyes can't perceive it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. With this in mind, let's turn our thoughts to our Heavenly Father. See Him? as we would the face of a friend. Touch his hand, brush against his arm, know yet he is real as the air we breathe. Certainly God has the power to make himself visible to us, but that's not the way he works among us. Though he is present, we cannot perceive him with our physical senses as we would an object or another person. Why not? Perhaps it's our human de tendency not to look past physical appearance. Our unseen God compels us to search for him in heart and mind and in the Bible where he most distinctly reveals himself. Or perhaps he wants no one to imagine that he favors one physical place over another and that we must ourselves make the journey to visit him, just the opposite. His Holy, Holy Spirit makes the journey to visit us wherever we happen to be. How do you picture your heavenly father? Yet all human conceptions of him fall far short of who he really is. You are all-powerful and ever-present God who loves you, cares for you, and hears you each time you come to Him in prayer. God is sheer being itself, Spirit. From John 4, 24. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. okay. And last, Daily Guide Posts. Hmm. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what the right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. That's Matthew 6, 3, 4. Despite my Irish heritage, St. Patrick's Day was almost just a day to wear green and decorate the wreath on our front door with shamrocks. But that changed when my beloved Uncle Pat died suddenly of a heart attack. It was then that I learned about the life of my uncle's patron, saint who introduced the people of Ireland to Christianity. As friends paid tribute to my uncle, they pointed out a parallel between the lives of these two men who shared the same name. Though separated by nearly 15 centuries in time, both were examples of caring, Christ-like service. Stories of Uncle Pat's secret acts of kindness many bestowed on people who couldn't do anything for him in return surfaced for the first time. I noticed, too, that the small, gentle gestures to which he never gave a second thought were remembered with great clarity by those who lit lives he touched. The lady who wrapped his meat at the butcher shop recalled fondly how he always took time to inquire about her family. The glasses of ice water on hot summer days were remembered by the mail carrier. <laughs> the clerk at the local deli, her gray hair coiled tightly in a bun, 
was the first of many who shared the same wistful memory. He brought, bought me chocolates. She could find the Uncle Pat's trademark chocolates. I discovered were a gift that elevated many a hardworking gas station attendant or stock boy to a position of prominence. Today, as I don green and celebrate my Irish an ancestry, I'm reminded anew of the legacies of St. Patrick and Uncle Pat. People are most attracted to Christianity by the love that drive our deeds. Help me, Lord, to serve you in secret, loving ways. Roberta Messner, we love you. Happy St. Patty's Day.